Welcome to Let's Play Gran Turismo 3 Episode 54. Alright, so we have officially cleared, I think, a third of the IB events in the Professional League, and officially, now we are going to move on to our fourth event. And that, of course, is the Professional Race of Turbo Sports. And, as I'm just going to have a look here by aspiration, I do not know what car I am officially wanting to use for this. And well, I think overall the car I am going to use for this is, well, because I haven't driven it yet, I'm going to use the Nismo 400R. And now let's just head up to the tuning shop and get all the necessary tuning we can do to this bad boy. <coughs> So, don't think I need a racing exhaust, and the only engine tuning we can truly do is the racing chip, besides the exhaust, and I'm also going to get myself the racing transmission just in case, and also, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that race 1 is probably going to be easy, so I'm not going to waste my time, I'm just going to put on the fucking Stage 1 turbo kit, and well, as for test course, I'm going to get myself the Stage 3 turbo, but also, just in case, I'm going to get myself the Stage 4 turbo as well, just in case, because I have a feeling that will be necessary. And I'm also going to put on the Racing Slick tyres. And I'm also going to get myself the Super Slicks just in case. And I'm also going to put on the first two stages of weight reduction. As of which I now have less than a million. But I'm pretty confident in saying this is the only tuning I'll really need to do, but just in case, I'll give this thing an oil change. And hopefully that should be enough for me to win at midfield, hopefully. Okay, so here we are. The Professional Race of Turbo Sports. If you want a Turbo Monster, Turbo. So, three race event as always, and tracks we are going to are midfield raceway, test course, and Apricot Hill and 30 grand if we can win each of these races as for aspiration, turbo only, and we also need an international B license in order to become eligible for entering such an event. So yeah, let's do this and see what competition we have. Okay, so we have on this attempt, an Impreza WRX STI, considering this is my second attempt of recording this. Then we have the Lancer Evo 7, along with the Esprit, a 300ZX, and at the back we have an RX7 FD. And I'm pretty certain I should have enough tuning on this thing. And so, let's get to it. Considering I know for sure test course is probably going to be a bitch. But, we shall wait and see. Meanwhile, let's get on with this. Race 1 in the Professional Race of Turbo Sports. I'm hoping that I have not made this too easy and I have managed to give myself a challenge this time. And already the Esprit is running wide, and he has now dropped back to the 5th position, as I am trying to make a manoeuvre on the Evo 7, and round 
the outside I go, and already I'm now up into second place. So, yeah, this is basically my second attempt at recording this. I basically dominated this race on my first attempt, and then on my second attempt. Sorry. And then by the time I got to test course, I knew very well that I was going to be off the pace. So I figured I was needing a reset, and that's exactly what I did with this game. And already, his AI, as I expected, are getting tatchy. Because the Evo 7 has now forced me back into second position. But hopefully, at the very least, if it comes down to pit stops, and I'm pretty sure it will, this is probably going to be how I will subsequently win this race, possibly. down the inside of the Impreza, kept it all nice and clean, no contact was made. I am now up into the lead for the first time as we approach the end of lap 2, and officially I am now, as a result, a second clear of the Impreza, and where I am probably hoping this is going to be an easy win. Probably not as easy to win on this attempt as it was the previous attempt. Anyways, I'm now two seconds clear of the Impreza, officially, and at the moment these two are having a good old dice for second place, as of which the Evo 7 now takes second away from the Scooby, and in fourth position, I think at the moment it is still the Esprit Sport. I am, of course, managing to give myself a reasonable position here for the lead, and where I am pretty certain some tuning will need to be done before we get to test course. Unfortunately, I did of course purchase the tuning I needed for test course, and on this attempt, like it was the previous attempt, I'm just running away with this race at the moment. Probably because I have the turbo. But at least I can say at the moment I'm not dominating as much as I was on the first attempt. And oddly enough, at the moment everything has been relatively clean, but again, it would depend on knowing what the margins are at the end of this race, but as I expected, this race is easy. Once you've got the tuning on. And also, if you are using this car like I am, then coefficiently you're essentially just going to dominate the first race, we think. But yeah, at the moment, I'm basically just running away with this race because I'm now seven seconds clear at the Evo 7, at the end of lap 4, and I am looking like I will almost certainly extend that interval. Anyways, lap 5, and I think it's probably safe enough to say that I may very well win this race by the time pit stops take place. So even though 
I'm not decimating the field as much as I was on my first attempt. Officially, this is my sensible attempt of me doing this, and at the moment I am looking more or less like emerging as the victor, because of how easy this first race really is. Unless I spin up to this point, I am pretty certain I'll probably hold on to the lead. Presumably up to the end of the race. Anyways. I am pretty much 11.6 seconds now clear of the Evo 7, and I think it's fair to say the rest of the field up to this point has been separated. And also, I set a new personal best lap time. And to anyone who seems impressed, that one person certainly isn't me. Because... I am just extending my lead at a vast rate of knots. Just not really thinking about anything else at the present time. Pretty much 14 seconds clear at the Evo 7, so I think it's fair to say, even if I do spin up to this point, I'm still pretty much going to win the race anyway. Because that is pretty much how easily farcical this race really is. So yeah, this race is basically piss easy. Probably easier than I was wanting it to be. Even when I am not racing. <sighs> as powerful of a car as I was in the first attempt. Now the Impreza is in the pits at the end of lap 6, and also the Nissan is in the pits as well. And by that I mean the 300ZX because I'm driving a Nismo. Because the car I am driving is a Nismo. And obviously this is basically a tuned R33 GTR, basically, is what this car is. And so extension of my domination, as I expected, is continuing, and as of which, at the end of lap 7, I have no challenges. So, I think it's fair to say that I probably have a threshold on the W by now. Anyways, we still have three laps to go, and I'm pretty certain up to this point, a victory is looking like it will be in my grasp. Unfortunately, because I know very well that Apricot Hill is 15 laps, I did remember to purchase myself. And now it is the FD that moves up into second. But, anyways. So for Apricot Hill, since I know that race is going to be longer than the first two, which is 15 laps to be precise, I am pretty certain I have everything I need for Apricot Hill, because I have the tyres I need. I am pretty sure after this test course is probably going to be a bitch, because I would imagine that is purely going to be on power and speed, and I know very well that obviously, even though I probably do have all the power I need, I don't have all the speed I need. And that's why I got the 
bracing transmission so I can adjust that speed. And hopefully if it's possible, the speed I will give to this thing at task course will potentially be enough for me to win the race. Although obviously, I will be wanting to test it first to see how far I get without the racing transmission. And I'll probably also put on the Stage 4 turbo kit, considering, obvi considering obviously Test Course will certainly have some major players dicing it out for the lead, anyways. So the FD is currently running in second, ahead of the Esprit, then in fourth I believe it is the Scooby, and then in fifth it's the Evo 7, and at the back up to this point, as I now start my final lap here at midfield, is of course the 300ZX. So, 37 seconds to the FD. I am pretty certain that victory up to this point is pretty much a certainty. And regardless of how little tuning I do to this thing, I am still pretty certain I will probably win this race because of my tyres. And so the Esprit has now taken second position away from the FD as a result of him not coming into the pits and officially this is going to drop the FD I think down to fifth position because the 300CX is actually not far behind the FD up to this point. So the Lotus Esprit will take second, then it'll be the Scooby ahead of the Evo 7, the FD will finish fifth, and then at the back it'll be the 300CX. Anyways, I win. And, oh, okay. It's the opposite of what I was thinking. The Evo 7 is actually ahead of the Subaru. Meanwhile, let's now wait for the rest of the field to finish. Because I dominated with my tyre longevity. Also with my tuning, but yeah. Let's wait for the rest of the field to finish. Alright, everyone has managed to finish, and in the end of that, I absolutely decimated the field once the pit stop, once the pit cycles took place, as of which, I won that event by 46 and a half seconds over the Esprit. Even though I believe he was the only car in this field that did not make a pit stop. So then in third it was the Mitsubishi ahead of the Subaru, then it was the Mazda RX-7 FD in fifth, and then at the back it was the Nissan. And the reason why I say Nissan is because I'm driving a Nismo. And also, just because I know this is going to be something I have to do. I'm just going to save the replay, because I already have a replay of this event saved at Test Course, and I've already saved a replay at Apricot Hill in the previous event. Anyways, second race, and this will certainly be the hardest. But let's do it anyway, and we'll see what happens. Why does he always have to be there? I don't understand. Why can he not be there? Oh, thank God. He is not in this race. Jesus fucking Christ. I am actually relieved. Yeah, I basically just decided I was going to keep entering and leaving the event until... The roof just wasn't there, and well, I'm gonna give this thing max speed. I don't care what anyone says. Because I'm pretty certain that somebody will be trying to stop me. But officially, this is now my fourth attempt of trying to do this. And let me tell you, this is, at the moment, 
clearly the hardest event I've had to do so far. And already I have no competition. And so I think it's pretty much fair to say that since I maxed out my top speed and I've also pretty much maxed out pretty much all the fucking power I can get. I am pretty certain this time I probably will win here. By default of me not having to race either the two skylines or the roof. Because if I did have to race them, it would be a very different story. But I am hopeful in saying that this time I do not. Also furthermore, I have not shifted up into sixth. Looks like my closest contender in this race is going to be the Supra, because he too was showing some reasonable pace, even though I'm pretty certain now that I have everything I need, I am probably going to decimate the opposition by default of me not having to race the Skylines. So basically what I did was, well, I just basically kept entering and exiting the event to the point of when I knew the roof was not going to be in the race, and then once that happened, I knew very well that I was probably going to be the dominator. And coincidentally enough, here we are now, pretty much three failed attempts later, and officially I'm basically decimating the opposition at the moment. Because I mean, god damn it, I've just got no competition on this attempt. Even though it would have been very different if I knew the Skylines were in this race, because they two were pretty quick. And thankfully this time, since I do not have any challenges for the lead, it is pretty much safe enough for me to say that I am probably going to go onwards to decimate the rest of the field, almost unquestionably. Because this is, because this is literally how much speed the Skylines had in comparison to the rest of these AI, and I'm pretty certain that if either of them were in this race, then I am pretty certain they would probably be competing with me at similar speeds, even though obviously I would not be hitting the rev limiter. And still, this race has been anything but easy, because I've literally had to pretty much do all of the power tuning I can do to this thing, including a racing transmission, just to literally make this thing competitive. And since I have now been there and done that, I am pretty certain I will probably win this race hands down. Since the roof is not in this race, nor is the... as the two fucking skylines. Even though I'm pretty certain if I had a prototype up to this point, then I'm pretty certain even they would probably be challenged. Because still, whenever that CTR2 was in this race, I just knew for sure I had no chance of winning. Once I could see how fast he was going. Because the Roof CTR2, whenever he was in these races, he was basically just in a league of his own. And oddly enough, that's exactly where I am at the present time, because I thought for sure there was going to be at least one of the Skylines, but ironically enough, 
and this tank there is not. And that is the main reason on why I'm just basically dominating this race. And most of this tuning, by the time we get to Epcot Hill, will obviously need to be removed. But again, I am relieved, at the very least, to say that I do not have to compete against the CTR on this attempt, because I'm pretty certain he would probably be decimating this race at the very moment of the way I'm currently decimating this race, because I'm pretty certain that, like I said before, if one of the Skylines was in this race, then I would be pretty much under threat, because they too are definitely quick. that by pure coincidence. But yeah, I mean, since this was probably the best car I could have used for this event, that was the main reason why I chose this thing. I'm certain many of you are going to be thinking that this is probably a rip-off. But again, I honestly don't care as long as I can eventually run the race. And obviously, I'm not removing any tuning I've already done to this thing. Because officially, if I did, then I would probably lose. It is looking more or less like I'm probably going to overlap someone before this race is done. I'm using little steering so I can just maintain my speed and my lap times are definitely proving to be consistent because I'm inside the 146s at the moment. And I am pretty certain that before this race is done, I will definitely overlap someone. Because that is just how much... ...domination my... ...pretty much... ...stupid choices... ...can somehow lead to. Because I honestly did not think I was going to be dominating the race by this much. I might, I might even overlap half the field if I'm lucky. And already overlapping the Ebo 7. Because obviously he is definitely not a contender. And I am pretty certain I will probably not overlap the entire field. Because the field at the moment is pretty much strung out. I have already overlapped the Evo 7, and so I am pretty certain that, obviously, if this race was not this easy on this attempt, then I am pretty certain there would definitely be some challenges, but unfortunately on this attempt there is not, and that is basically the Simplicit reason as to why exactly I am not being challenged in this race. Anyways, I do manage to improve on my PB because my best lap time is now a 146.4. I'm pretty certain I've overlapped one of the Evos, or at least the only Evo in this race. And that's all. like I'm gonna overlap, yep, it's the three, sorry, correction, it's the RX-7 I'm now overlapping, and so, I think it's fair to say I am definitely going to overlap probably half the, probably half the field before this race is done, because I would imagine the rest of the field are probably only turning about, probably, 
290, 300Ks, methinks, in terms of their overall speeds. But, fortunately, for me at least, I am not the one who is on the back foot. And I'm just continuing to extend, because I'm now over a minute clear of the Supra. And I am just continually extending my interval. And well, I guess there really isn't any other way I can say this, but... Trabissimo. I know that probably sounds Italian, but obviously that's basically the only word I'm going to go for. And as a result of me drafting the back markers, my lap times are definitely getting quicker and quicker. Okay. I'm now, we are now pretty much halfway through this race and I think one thing I can clarify is that, well, overlapping the entire field is not completely out of the question. Although I'm relatively certain I will not be able to overlap everyone. Because I think the Supra has a bit too much of a distance in order for him to be overlapped, methinks. certainly overlap everyone else, because that is one thing I can guarantee. And as for the tuning itself, well, I'm not going to remove any of that, because anything could easily go wrong if I do that. But yeah, I mean, even if I'm competing at my best, I know for sure that I will not be a contender for this race for pretty much as long pretty much as long as I know. There is a CTR2 in this race. I will just not be a contender for the race win. I might as well confirm that hands down. But officially I'm setting relatively even lap times because most of my lap times are pretty much within the 146s. And the only other thing I can really say besides that is that, well, most of the field will pretty much be overlapped. But if I do manage to overlap the entire field, that will astonish me. But there's no way in hell I'm doing this race again. And surprisingly, the Subaru is actually in the third position at the moment. Assumingly because probably the road car has a lot more speed than the rally car does. And as I predicted, this is a boring race. Because I've just been dominating pretty much from start to finish. And even if something does go horribly wrong up to this point, I'm pretty certain I probably will have more than enough time to get back up to speed. But again, the CTR is a major contender in this. The Supra is now in the pits, and so I think that has pretty much guaranteed for me to say at the very least I have overlapped the entire field, and as I say that, I set a new best lap time. Because that is just by how much I have decimated the opposition in this race. And so I think it's fair to say, as a result of pit stops, I have pretty much overlapped the entire field. And all I can really do now is basically just ride around and hope to reach the finish line. 
in just a matter of time. Considering, obviously, since I am basically streaks ahead of the AI in this attempt, I am pretty certain that I will certainly decimate the opposition. As of which, that's basically what I've already done. But again, it is going to take a while for these AI to finish this race. And I could possibly even overlap the Evo 7 twice in this race. Because he is clearly behind everyone else. In terms of overall speed, and that is, ex that is exactly what I do. And so, I think it's fair to say that I've overlapped the entire field at least once, and I've also overlapped the Evo 7 twice. Still, I did not expect myself to be dominating this much. Anyways, final lap, and I am pretty certain this is probably guaranteed to be a victory lap. Even though I am your lap. But I don't care because I'm pretty much guaranteed for the win up to this point. Because the entire field can basically unlap themselves and well, I would still be the winner. And effectively, at the end of the race, I would still be the winner. But still, that is literally how much of an interval I have over these AI in terms of speed. And obviously, as you would expect, I am of course going to wait for these AI to finish, because I like to be patient that way. But again, because overlapping in this game is a thing, obviously, I will not have to wait as long for them to complete the full distance. Because overlapping is, is actually a thing in this game, and it's basically been a thing in the GT series for pretty much every game since this one, where we can actually overlap the entire field. But still, that is just literally how much I've just crazily dominated this race. By default in me not having to compete against a skyline or a roof. Anyways, I win. And it's taken me just under 18 minutes for me to do all of that. And all I have to do now is just wait for everybody else to finish. But still, I just crazily dominated that race on my fourth attempt at doing this. Regardless of how much I dominated this, there's no way in hell I'm doing this again. Anyways, let's now wait for everybody else to finish. Come on, come on. Yes! Finally! So, after three failed attempts of me trying to win here at Test Horse, I finally managed to win, and as a result of this being my winning attempt, I pretty much went from pretty much being the second fiddle to the CTR2 to pretty much being the dominator. Because that is how much I just decimated the rest of these AI. I just literally went from pretty much being the back marker in that race to pretty much being the clear dominator. Anyways, last race in the Race of Turbo Sports, and it takes place at Apricot Hill, and where I will need to remove most of my tuning. And it is starting to rain heavily outside my door. And this time we are doing 15 laps around the course. And well, yeah, why not? Actually, no. I think this is going to be easy, so... 
don't really think I need too much horsepower to win this, since I'm pretty certain whilst it's 15 laps it'll probably be decided on tyres anyway. But yeah, let's do this. It's time for Apricot's Cup. Where I am hopefully saying that I officially have all the power I need. I forgot to take the transmission off. Which is probably one thing that I should have done, but eh. I guess I'm just lazy. But at the very least, I do get the challenger. And depending on how much I will probably lose this race by, we will just have to wait and see. Although, obviously, I should have taken off the transmission, but unfortunately, I did not. So, uh, whoops. Anyways, I am starting to catch up now to the skyline, so he's not leading this thing by too much. Even though I probably should have taken off the racing transmission before I started this race, but again, we're just going to have to wait and see what happens, because I'm pretty certain pit stops probably will be the order of the day, and I think my win ratio probably will go down after this, because fuck test course. And furthermore, I still hate how many times I have to race a fucking course. Because... Because of how sinister the course really is. I knew that was one thing I forgot to do. As a result, my right side tyres are already starting to take in most of the damage. I'm pushing this thing at the moment. Although, at the very least, I am staying close to the skyline, so... I'm not completely out of this race just yet. Even though if I don't win this race, then obviously that is going to be Staying behind the skyline at the moment, so I do not see any challenges at the present time. Even though I probably should have taken off 
my racing transmission before I started this event. Because I might actually be slowing down as a result of this because of how heavy it is. Is what he thinks. Well, I guess it's just one of those things I can't change. But again, it doesn't matter too much because I still take the lead anyway. As a result of the skyline running wide, but I'm pretty certain he will come back at me and there really is no point in fighting because I'm pretty certain he will get the jump anyways. Because even though both of us are technically the sun skylines, the truth is he probably has a stronger handling car than I do, so really is no point in fighting him off. If you want my complete honest opinion, because I'm still going to be able to fight back anyway. Judging by what I'm able to pull off at the present time. Although, if I don't manage to overtake the skyline before the end of this race, then I will just need to try this again. And basically keep trying until I do win. Also, problem is, as a result of this fight, my motor sits up into this thing, and we both got loose there through the corner, but I was at least able to correct any issues I had. Unfortunately, I am now up into the lead, and as of which the Lotus is now involved in this fight as well. And I think I can tell the transmission might be part of the tyre degradation here at Apricot Hill. Because even though Apricot Hill is reasonably hard on the tyres, I am pretty certain the transmission the transmission could be possibly a key indicator towards this, and as I suspected, tyres are of course pretty much being the order of the day. Meanwhile, I now take the lead. And domination up to this point is pretty much going to be guaranteed for the rest of this race once these AI make rapid stops. Skyline is going to be a play at all. But officially, after my domination and test course, I think it's fair to say that I would probably win this race, judging by what I can see at the moment, considering I am now managing to pull out a margin ahead of the spree, from what I can tell, as of which the gap is now 3.1 seconds, so I'm pretty certain I probably will win this thing by now, by default of me having the more durable tyres. And so the interval is now 4.1 seconds to the spree, so I guess up to this point, all I can really say is, well, my opponents. We 
would basically be the main thing I'm trying to point out here. Anyways. Interval is now five seconds to the Esprit, so I think victory up to this point is pretty much going to be guaranteed by the time he makes his pit stop. Unfortunately, I will not have to stop with the tyres, at least not yet. And to anyone asking why my webs are, and to anyone asking why my gears are so long, the truth is, I mentioned before, I forgot to remove the racing transmission from the test course. The truth is, with me, I don't feel like removing that, so I'm just going to keep it on and we'll just see what happens. Considering I've already driven nearly 250 kilometers with this thing, and most of those kilometers were piled on a test course. So, I think it's pretty much fair to say which car by the end of this I will have probably driven the most. This time the Esprit does come into the pits after 9 laps and this is pretty much where I will dominate the rest of the race. Because apparently there might be tyres are proving to be the main story of this race. Anyways, lap 9 and I am Still continuing to pull away from the rest of the field. basically like the early stages of this race and then after that once he hits it and then after that once the skyline made it into the pits he pretty much dropped down to third and it allowed the Esprit to take second place and me to take the lead and I have basically led this race ever since. And looking pretty much more than likely to dominate this race for probably the rest of the distance, he thinks. So Twenty six point three five seconds is now the margin at the end of lap nine, and I can pretty much say victory this time will not be forbidden compared to the countless number of times it was forbidden the test course and the Supra has just spun off into the gravel trap. Probably because he must have had a lot of movie steer. Anyways, the domination run continues here at Apricot Hill. And uh, I've discovered I can win this with only a stage 1 to the kit. It's 
so eventually, after getting lucky enough to not having to race the CTR2 at Task Force again, for the fourth attempt where I did actually manage to win the race, and also by default of there being no skylines in that race, officially, I was able to eventually win the race pretty much overlap the entire field, and that is the main reason why I still have the racing transmission, because subsequently... Because I overlapped the entire field at Task Force, by the default of there not being any RUFs or R34s at Task Force, that was ultimately the only reason why I dominated that race as much as I did. Because I know very well that if the roof was in that race, then obviously he would have just pretty much fucking stomped me to the floor anyway. And also, I would have been relatively I would have been equally matched with both of the skylines if you're wanting my logical approach. Especially, besides that, the only other thing I can really say about Task Force is the fact on saying that whenever there are not either of the Skylines or the CTR2, then uh, you can basically dominate if you have the car maximised on power. Unfortunately, on that attempt when I did win a Task Force, I basically did. Anyways, three laps to go, and officially... I am still continuing to dominate this race. Unsurprisingly, with my tyre longevity. And officially, along with that, I can pretty much say that both the first and third races of this event have proven to be easy. That's pretty much the only thing I can really say. Oh fuck, I knew that was going to happen eventually. Good thing it didn't happen earlier in the race, or else I really would be in the shit. Fortunately, however, I am not. And I think it's fair to say that domination is the only word I can really think of at the present time. Anyways. We are now on the second to last lap here at Apricot Hill, and by the time I do start the final lap, I will probably be The spree is still keeping up somehow, but obviously it's only because he is on fresher tyres than I am, so the spree is definitely closing in, but obviously... Oh, okay. I think I'm just going to shut up now, because I'm getting everything wrong. The way I see it at the moment. Okay, I 
think I'm just going to shut the fuck up now because I'm actually extending again. And I think the only thing I can really say is that, well, after surpassing the ordeal that was fucking Task Force, I have officially managed to basically go on the and dominate both the first and third races. Anyways, final lap, and I'm pretty certain this is probably going to be a victory lap as well, because... All I can really say overall as well, I will probably unsurprisingly win this race. And I think I've already overlapped the Super once, but again, because he keeps, I think, spinning off into the gravel at that same corner pretty much over and over again, I think that's probably the main reason why I overlapped him. Although technically overall, I have noticed the AI tend to do that quite a lot at this very corner. And oddly enough, in the 15 laps that I have driven here on Tony Cart Hill, I have only fallen victim to that corner once. Basically, it just goes to show how much more durable these tyres were in comparison to the AI. And I also cut the chicane. Because my reaction times are very slow. Anyways, final corner. And... Coming across the start-finish line right now, and there we go. And the spree did not fall too far behind once he made his pit stop. He has been able to stay within pretty much 30 seconds of me ever since. And now the Evo 7 has just finished, and officially... Let's now wait for the rest of the field to get to the finish line. And as I say that, the Esprit finishes. But yeah, let's wait for everyone else now. There's the Supra. Alright, so in the end of that race we overlapped two cars. Both the Evo 7 and the Supra, as a result of them probably both making the same mistakes at the same corner. The Esprit finished in second. And he was pretty much under half a minute behind me, so... Fair play to him. Then it was the Skyline in third, and then in fourth. Pretty much a minute behind me, it was the RX-7. And so, following... The treacherous torture that was Test Course, I have pretty much dominated both of the first and final races in this event, and just to be certain, yep, I do have a replay saved, and let's now move on to the prize car. And what do we get this time? We get the car which pretty much rushed us a test course. We get the IUF CTR2, or Reef CTR2. And I gotta be honest, this thing actually does look... This thing actually looks okay in silver. But, there we go. After all of the commodities and atrocities that took place at Test Course, we have pretty much sweeped the other two races. And next time we shall be doing the Italian Avant Garde. But before we do that, it's prize car time, and... Yep, as I expected, Test Course moved my win ratio down again. And we only moved up by 0.1% in terms of completion. But anyways, this is our prize car. After all of that struggling at Test Course, we win the CTR2. The car which basically thrashed us at Test Course in terms of straight line speed. Alright, 
and I'm done. And so next time, we shall be doing the Italian avant-garde, so yeah, stay tuned for more of GT3. Thank you.